To get this off, we're going to use our plastic panel removal tool. Um, and you can see there's a seam all down through here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come with this plastic tool down here along the bottom edge. And we're going to work out. Work. This is good. This one's tight. That's good. You guys are seeing this. So we get that off like so. And then come out. This bottom one's always tricky. It's got a little plastic, this little hook down here. So basically, we're coming out and then off. And you can see it's just held in by little clips back here. It's a really straightforward process. That is going to expose us to one and two Torx T25 bolts. And again, we've got that here in our toolkit, the Torx T25. We've got our bath sound driver here. And then we just simply go in there, go fishing, unscrew it. Super simple. You can see there's literally, there's nothing complex about this. So as we do this, we do one door at a time. Of course, we, we roll our windows down. Uh, I always like to start on the passenger door. I, um, it's just, a, it's just the way I work. I like to go around the car. So passenger door, center channel, driver door, driver rear, passenger rear. Just a nice little circle. And then once you're all done, take a nice audition. So we hop up in here. Again, you can go do something else while you watch me. There we go, fumble for this thing down in there. So get these guys out of there. And you can see these two screws are exactly the same, so you don't have to worry about keeping them separate. We've got these two Torx T25s out. The panel is now loose. So the way I like to do it, there's a couple ways, but truth of the matter is the easiest thing to do is to just take a firm grip down here on this bottom corner of the door and just with one little strong motion in. <laughs> That's funny I say that and it's, Boy, this one's tight. That's good. That's good. Usually you can get them to pop free. So you just come back here with your plastic panel removal tool. You get one clip free. You heard that kind of give. And then once one of them is free, you can see the whole door just frees itself. So I'm going to kind of pull it in. And then there's clips along this top edge as well. The whole panel just off like this. As you can see, now we've got the panel in our lap. We just pop this out like so. You can see again how I did that. This is the door handle, so we just lift with our finger, just pop it out. So you can see the door panel open, closed, open, closed. So when you put it back together, you make sure it's closed. So with that out of the way, we can now, let's do this. Let's unplug our lighting here. That out of the way. We've got our, let's grab our metal panel removal tool. Let's pop out this clip here, these clips rather, holding in, this is going to the window, get that out of the way, like so, and that leaves us, actually, let's get this out of here too, let's get all of this stuff out of the way, get our lights, Boy, BMW did a thorough job of clipping everything down here. So again, we're just prying these little guys out. Unplug the light down there. Just by pulling out like so. All right, so now that we've got all of our clips out of the way, everything's free, the last thing we need to do, and we'll do this on the drivers and the passenger doors, disconnect this factory window switch. And there's six little, it's hard to show you guys, but if you look down through these holes, there are six little clips that we need to free up so that we can pop the window out, the control out of the door. So you need to use your metal panel removal tool here because it's really tight and just, see like that, it just comes out like so. Now we've got it coming out of the front, as you can see, and we just unplug it like so, pull this out, and now our door panel is free. It's up out of the way, safe. We're just going to unbolt the mid-range, unplug the tweeter, unplug 
the wires coming from the factory amplifier, which we will re reuse these. We will not reuse. We just use our Torx T20, pop the mid out like so. Say goodbye to your anemic factory system. It is on its way out. So factory drivers out of the way. We're going to get this tweeter pot off. All right, so to get the tweeter pot off, there's a little tab up top that just pops in, and then there's one in the bottom that goes into a little slot. So we actually need to remove the top half first, like so, and then we lift up and out. You can see right back here, this little tab, so that it sits down in this little U. We lift up and out, and it comes right off. So lift the top out, lift up and off, and then the tweeter pod comes off. And then we just pop out the foam, take off the 37 feet of wiring. We're going to take this up to our workspace so we can get the new tweeter installed. So here we are with our front tweeter pod. This is the same in the passenger and the driver door. So what we're going to do, we're going to pry out the factory tweeter. There are four little tabs in here, kind of holding it all in. And you can really just pry it out. Like It's really nothing complex. It just pops out like that. Here's the new tweeter. Which, as you can see, so pretty. And then our tweeter just goes right back in the way the original came out. Heard it snaps right in perfectly. It's like so. And then you can see from the front side, you see that beautiful machined aluminum ring, which matches your gauges on the dash perfectly. So it's a, just a fantastic fit. So the tweeters in, um, I like to go ahead and do this now. So you can see we've sent you a, a two little harnesses. These are for the front doors. Um, got little, little harnesses that snap in line between the tweeter and the mid range. Absolutely imperative that you do this. This must be installed before you then plug into the mid range, which is, in, you know, it's got its own little plug right here. So this just must go between the two of them. So just be conscientious of that. So with our tweeter in place, we take the factory stuff. That's the technical term. Get it back in there like so. Actually, let's, you know, they've got this little funky little routing for the factory wires through the, um, let's do it. Let's do it the way they do it. Oh, fantastic. We'll do it the way they do it. So let's put this back on. They thought of everything. So you can see, just like the factory wires, that you might have noticed that you could see the factory wires through the factory grill. It's a really weird design. So the wires you can see just kind of fit in that channel, and then they just pop out back here, like so. And then we'll just make the connections right here with everything else. So one thing I did forget to mention, uh, it's very important that the tweeter terminals are not up here near this tab. You can have it, the tweeter turned around that way. We want them down here on the bottom out of the way because it's, it's a very snug fit in there. So we just want to make sure that those terminals are not interfering with this clip right here. So noted, let's head back to the car and knock this out. All right guys, so here we are, got everything. We've installed our tweeter. We're gonna put the tweeter pot in. We're gonna install the mid-range. We're gonna put a block of sound deadening on this speaker to get this nice and dead for the install. So uh, first thing I want you to do, however, Go ahead and plug in the window so that we can, wait, is that the window? I can't remember, is this the window? I don't know. It looked the same, Peter. Let's see, I think that's the, I think that's the window. Yeah, that's the light. This is the light. This one's coming from the back is the window. So plug that in. We're gonna roll the window up because we don't wanna scratch the window while we're working or especially if you've got tent on the windows like this car does. I'm going to turn it off and unplug it. So now we've got ample room. Plus what we're doing is we're going to put the sound deadening down and we're going to fold it back around so that we can get the sound deadening on both sides of the metal, basically doubling up on it so we can further deaden this panel. So I've kind of cut out a little, you know, we don't have a lot of room here as, as usual. Uh, so I kind of cut out this like so. We just want to, and I've got a razor blade here. So we just basically adhere it like this. And then what we're going to do is to apply it down with our fingers. And you're not going to hurt anything by just 
doing this. And again, remember, like we discussed earlier, we want to get it nice and tacky. What I like to do usually is take like the butt of my panel removal tool and then you see it's getting a nice, we're getting it nice and adhered back there. You can see how I'm able to just roll over this and get a nice adhesion. So at this point, what I like to do, again, our window's up. <laughs> I like to cut, just cut some little strips like so. And then I just take these guys and I fold them back around on the inside. And so we've effectively doubled up on this sound deadening. So it's dead, which is what we want. So job done, well done, I should say. And now, which is kind of silly now, what we've got to do there's actually a couple things we want to point out. So here's our new mid-base driver. So you see we've got this little ring on the front side. We actually take that off and we put it on the back side, like so. So then the driver actually is oriented like this. So what we want to do, it's a little, I would, tricky enough to work. So what we do is we just peel back this really thick, gooey stuff here. And that's where we're going to pass the wires up through, like so. Very straightforward. This stuff's gummy, so just be. So we get the wires, like so. Go ahead and get our mid range secure. You can actually see the holes. Let's go ahead and take our Torx T20. And where the little where the factory speaker kind of mounted in here, you can see like these little you know just poke a hole with your Torx bit, like so. Do it on all three points like that. There we go. That'll get everything nice and started. Then again, we just make sure our little ring is there, perfect. Line it up. Start it with your hand. You don't want to inadvertently poke a hole through the uh, through the speaker obviously so just get it pretty snug grab your next screw like so and that is per Perfection. So we've got our mid-range securely mounted, like so. As you can see, I'm just turning a little bit, going around, and that is nice and snug. And we pull up nice and snug on these, put this back. Actually, you know what we might as well do? Put that down. So and then put that back down like that. And then everything is nice and sealed again, at which point we take our blue connector, plug into our blue connector, like so. That is nice and secure, out of the way. And then we will plug the tweeter in, but let's do this first. Let's put our window back down. So plug our window back in, car on, window down, Car off, unplug the window, and now the tweeter housing ready to go. So again, we've got this little front edge here, this front lip that hooks around this front lip right here. And remember, we put our bottom piece in, snap it down, and then pleak. so I'll kind of show you that the bottom piece in. Like so, you see how we hooked it around here, how that hooks in, and the tweeter housing is back in the car. So at this point, we simply take this, plug into the tweeter, 
actually let's keep this nice and tight out of the way again you had that factory speaker it's got its little thin foam ring on it it's imperative that you do this as well on the new driver and we've custom cut some little cutouts for you the center pieces you can make frisbees out of or do whatever you want it's absolutely imperative so that the mid-range sits flush up in the grill and that the front of the waves are separate from the back so it's very important that you do this um, this just goes you can see it's a brilliant like everything it's completely over engineered all this stuff so that when the panel sits on it sits nice and flush so panels done let's get it back up here I'm gonna have to close this door a little bit to kind of come in here and work all right so you remember our window fiasco from earlier let's go ahead and get all that connected let's also get up here remember our door handle remember we want it closed so close the door handle snap like so all right boy somebody is enjoying themselves a nice bit of marijuana it smells like one of our neighbors perhaps tally ho good sir We've got this guy down here yeah if I could even see I would like to show you guys there's a little clip right there and we plug in our light switch like so so now all we have left to do is come, actually you know what let's let's get this on the outside of that and then we close the handle put that on clip clip don't forget to plug in these fancy schmancy lights be very careful with this piece and lastly we just align that I like to align the top of the door first and then I just take my hands and like so so the door is effectively on don't forget we've got to still do our window make sure boy that is some strong marijuana but we are in California all right so at this point we just lift up a little bit you'll feel all of the clips kind of settle into place Your door is back on, well, for the most part. Let's, uh, let's keep it going though, let's keep it going. So we've got this 20 Torx T25, these two to put right back in. Let's not forget them. One up top, one down low. Boy, I hope I am still coherent enough to continue on with this installation video. All right, so with that done, we are effectively, well, we need to snap these pieces back on. So again, with our windows, you can see the key, it's got two little tabs here on the back that have to slot under first. So we put them down, reach through, push back and down. Kind of finagle it in down here. Let's see, where does that guy go? He goes right there. and everything snaps back in place. So it really couldn't be more straightforward than putting all this stuff back together. Let's see, did that go in? Yeah, that went in. Did it? Yeah, that's it. And that completes the front door. And you can, again, look, you can kind of peek in there and see the little aluminum housing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we do our F32 front doors. So let's, uh, let's pause it right here and uh, rejoin you for a little bit of action on the center channel. All right, guys, so we've knocked out the passenger front door. We're moving on to the center channel. Again, here we're in the 4 Series. Uh, this is a, a, a hi-fi car. So what we'll find under here is a single mid-range driver. If you had the Harman Kardon vehicle uh, system in your car, there'd be an additional tweeter under here. So uh, in this particular case, we're just going to go ahead and take our plastic panel removal tool and very carefully get up under this edge like so. And we're just going to rotate. just 
going around this edge here, and then we're just gonna lift up like so. You see I'm just turning like that, and then once we get it started, well, actually, you know what? These new cards are so tight, it's actually good. Let's come around from this side. Do the same thing. And then, these are pretty darn fragile, so just be conscientious of that. And I'll show you what I'm doing here in a minute. You can see exactly how we're working this out of here. And you can see, these are the clips we're, so we're just freeing these little clips up, that's all. And as you can see, we've got another speaker. This car is about a month and a half old and the speaker used to be black. And you can see the sun just absolutely destroys these, these speakers. So using our right angle driver, it is in the Bav Sound Toolkit. We'll go ahead and grab each one of these Torx T20s and we will loosen these out of here. You do not want to drop these down there. Take my word. You do not want to do that. So, get these screws out of the way. We don't want them going down inside the dash. You will spend all... No, Actually, I've never dropped one down here, so I can't say how bad it would be to have to go fishing for it, but rest assured, it wouldn't be pleasant. All right, so. And lastly, this one by the windshield closest. Just make sure you keep your fingers protecting this windshield nice and out of the way. So I'm just using my finger as much as I can up here because I don't, I just like to be safe around the windshield. So, I've got all three screws out. Speaker just lifts right out like before. Just be, again, conscientious of this. Unplug it just by pulling down. We've got the speaker out. Fantastic. So we're gonna be installing our new, I'll actually show you guys this, our new Bav Sound driver. So here is, the new driver, here's the old one. A little different as you can see. There's a couple things we're gonna do with the new driver. Number one, you can see we've machined a custom spacer ring, which we need to space the, the center channel out of this little area. Number two, we need to pop off this rubber boot from the mid-range, just like we did in the door. Again, this is, this is just aesthetic. This serves no acoustical purpose. And in fact, in our later generation drivers, that's no longer going to be there because we were wasting a colossal amount of materials and we don't want to do that any longer. So again, um, now with the mid-range out, we're going to reinstall our new one. So the first thing we'll do, set our spacer ring in there like so. Then we shall take our mid-range. We won't use the tweeter plug unless you have the Harman Kardon card. Then you'll plug in the tweeter and of course the tweeter bolts in right here. Um, for those of us with the hi-fi systems, not a concern for us. Snap that in. Just like so, turn our speaker around. Let's get everything situated out of the way. And let's see, it's hard to see from the passenger seat. Ordinarily, if I'm not filming, this is a lot easier to, to deal with. <laughs> there we go. So we've got our mid-range there. We just, with our hands, start each one of these screws, like so. Pretty darn straightforward, huh? So, get it back in, flip the little switch, get each one started. Don't just go torquing one down and then go get all the other ones. Do one at a time. Just get everything started and then just snug. Get that one snug. And again, just be careful to always protect the windshield. I mean, we're not gonna do any damage. I mean, there's not that much torque going on up here, but again. And as you can see, we now have a perfect fit for our mid-range in the dash. So at this point, we just make sure everything's clear. If your tweeter's there, again, it would just bolt right in. And now we take our housing line everything back up and 
just using our fingers, snap it back down, voila, we've upgraded the center channel. So at this point, we would move over to our driver's door. Uh, but what we're going to do is join you guys in the back seat to go ahead and get started on the rear mid range. So guys, we are here. I'm having a Tecate. It's hot today. Uh, while we are in San Diego, the craft beer capital of the world, um, sometimes there's just Tecate in the refrigerator at the office and you just, you know, you do what you do. But anyway, this is remarkably straightforward in the convertible, the rear speaker. So this is a hi-fi car. If you've got the Harman Kardon, you're going to have a little tweeter hanging out right here. We've got a video for that. It's a very straightforward process in and of itself. The trick, which isn't even that tricky, is getting this panel out. Um, you can do it with no tools. You can do it with your hands and uh, your brain and Tecate. So uh, let's kind of get the process started, yeah? Damn, that is refreshing. Uh, refreshing. Okay, so back seat. Top is obviously down. You could do this with the top up. You'd just be a masochist. So, back seat, lift, look at that. And then you just pull out towards you. Get your hands back here. Break it free, bam, back seat out. So, that was easy, right? Straightforward. Now, we need to remove this panel here, which again, very straightforward. So just fold the seat. Be careful, you've got this little tab right here. So don't put any weight on it. Just fold the seat down. And then this guy here, just kind of work your hand back here and pull towards the front of the car. Like so. Lift up. That's what we were freeing. So there's a tab. Actually, it stayed in. That's good. I can show you. So this little tab just snaps right in here. I'm really glad that happened, actually. So that ordinarily stays with the piece. So. So we pull out and lift up because that's what we're freeing. So with that out of the way, we now have access to this panel, which, you know, you could, if you, again, some sort of masochist, there's a T20 Torx right here. You can lift this out. There's a couple little tabs up here that you need to pull this out and lift up. Some people want to do it that way. You are welcome to take the extra time. Uh, we will not be. So we are all about efficiency and maximizing our sound quality. So I'm going to kind of get comfortable in here. Hey, look at that. Oh, I thought it was glass. Okay. Hang on a second. It's still a little toasty. I'm going to put this up here. Oh man. You know, it's not a sculpin. It's not anything out of ballast point, but it's certainly doing its job. Okay. Hands. Reach back here. There is a, there's a tab here. There's tabs up here, 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 and here. So I'm going to use my fingers. I'm going to reach back here, right here. You can feel it and just pull. And then right here, just pull. And then we're going to come here, pull. And then we're going to come. I know it's kind of hard. I'm going to try and get down in here. Thank goodness I'm 6'6", 240. We're going to pull up here. Like so. We're going to pull right there. And now, let's kind of rock it down because there are male tabs on this panel that just hook into female tabs up here. So the tab, the panel's completely free and we just kind of get back here. There's one more tab up here. Twerk it out. That's a word I recently learned. For those of you older guys, I'm learning the new uh, youth speak. It's good for us. So we want to be super careful back here. There's a little plug and I'll show you with the panel off. Before you free the panel, there's a plug back here I just disconnected and I'll show you where it is once I have the panel off. I can't show you until then. Th that is the ambient lighting that goes under here. You don't want to break that. Um, not that, you know, just, just don't break it. Kind of our whole MO here, right? So look at that. Bam. Panel's loose. We unplug a couple things and I'll show you again how we do that later. It's really hard to show right now because it is completely pitch black. Back here. Boy, that Tecate is doing me right, I tell you. That's my... All right, so this little guy. This will all make sense to you momentarily. And you can see how I... I can show you the plug. Okay, so what I was fiddling with back there was this plug here. And you... There's a little tab here, which we depress 
and then we pull out. And this was the tab that went into the little ambient lighting. So it just pulls right out. So here's, here's where it plugs into. And so we just pull it right out. Can't goof it up. And then here's our factory driver. And then we're going to take this up to the bench, swap it out, get rocking and rolling. We're almost, I mean, it's, again, it's, for me, with no one bothering me, it's five minutes aside. You're going to take 20 minutes, maybe 20 minutes if, uh, if you're drunk. So let's pause it here. Let's go to the bench. Let's upgrade the speaker. And again, if you've got the HK system, you can see where the tweeter would be. Just a little unscrewing of the ring. Pull the ring through. Pop out the factory tweeter. Pop our tweeter in. A couple little dabs of adhesive, just like the BMW tweeter. Put it back through. Screw the ring back on. Plug it in. Done. So anyway, that was very quick. Uh, so let's stop here. Go to the bench. All right, guys. So this could not be any more straightforward. Unscrew one speaker. Screw one in. I'm going to show you, though, part of the myriad of reasons the OE systems are so lackluster, down to you know driver design, etc. But these little guys, they just they just leave a lot to be desired. So here's the OE driver, and then here's ours. You can see the curvilinear cone on ours, the inverted surround, so that we've got tighter control over that cone. Obviously, the, this is our, so you want to make sure, these are separate, we ship these separately, so make sure you install the foam rings to ensure an airtight seal on the mid-range so that we keep the front and rear waves of the driver separate so that there's no pollution, if you will, in terms of the, um, the sound output. So with our driver, just like the factory one, it is not rocket science. We put it on there. And we screw it down. I have popped off the rubber boot. You know, it ships with a rubber boot. It's real tight back there, as you know. So I suggest um, popping that rubber boot off. I never bothered testing with the rubber boot on. Um, it does not affect the acoustics of the driver. It's really just an aesthetic thing. Um, but I took it off because it's so tight back there. So if you want to waste your time and leave the boot on, you are absolutely welcome to do so. I would appreciate your feedback in the comments if you go that route. Because uh, then I might, uh, I might change my tune. But nevertheless, so as you can see, this is exhilarating here. Remember righty tighty lefty loosey. If I'm telling you that now at this point, you should not be doing this installation. You should have your three-year-old come do it for you. Or your dog. Your dog could probably do it too. So, driver snugged up. At this point, if you've got the HK, you would plug in the black lead to the tweeter and the corresponding capacitor harness. If you have the hi-fi car, this just hangs out. So what we'll do, just tuck it down here like so, out of the way. In terms of putting sound deadening on this panel, uh, I do on occasion, but with this being mounted to plastic here, and then this already being really dead, it's just a press board type material, um, I would ordinarily sound deaden this in the interest of time and Takate, I, I won't this evening. If you do, we have a separate sound deadening video that talks about how we do it, which would effectively be removing all of this, applying the sound deadening to the surface. Um, I really wouldn't waste my time on the rear. Uh, the front is key, however. There's so much exposure to road noise up there. As you can see in the back of the car, it's totally dead. So I would just mount the rear drivers, focus all my sound deadening on the front sound stage and rock out like that. So again, not used in the hi-fi cars. This always plugs in directly to the OE connection. So with the speaker installed, at this point, uh, we're gonna have a little more Tecate and see if we can't get this uh, panel on. And uh, if not, well, you know, we'll have another one, figure it out. All right, guys, so here we are on our workspace. This is with our rear door of the 4 Series Grand Coupe. Also, for those of you with the 3 Series with the Harman Kardon, same method here. So we're just going to extract the OE tweeter, which, as you can see, has been globbed in here with a little bit of glue and, and such and then routed and things like that. So we take our little metal panel removal tool, and we're going to just pry this little guy off here so we can get these wires out of there. Like so, just pop them out, pop that guy out, pop it out, pop it out. And now, we can extract this tweeter. So to do so, you can see there's just kind of 
Well, there's only, it's just like that front tweeter where there's just four little clips, but we've got to get past this glue. So again, in our toolkit, we've got a little black right angle pick. So we just kind of get down in here and there's no method to this. Just pick out the glue. Hell the, boy, that's not really great, is it? That glue is damn in there, huh? So just, that's all we're doing. Ultimately, we just want this tweeter out of here. So the glue just comes right out. We're going to put a little bit more back in. We, we sent you a, a little tube. Um, our tweeter fits better than this, but it's one of those things where in the front door, they kind of use that foam padding to sandwich the tweeter into the housing. So that prevents any weird resonance. And back here, there's nothing to really do that, which is why the glue has been used. So. I said, we're going to do this. We're just going to reapply a little bit of glue as well. But we got to dig this out first. So that glue pretty much out. The tweeter just pops. Oh, I guess I don't have that glue pretty much out yet. Because there's about a gallon of it in this particular car. Funny, the other side had like the smallest little blob. Looks like they, uh, this was like the end of a tube or something. The guy just said, put all the glue in there, Heinrich. Or Gunther, I'm sure there's someone named Gunther over there too. So with the glue, out, the tweeter actually will just lift right out of here. As you can see it just, just pops right out. Very similar to the front. So no more aluminum 10 can tweeter chopping at your ear. We put it, we replaced this with this. As you can see, art, eh. Okay, so let's get this glue out of here. Keep it as clean as we can. And then take our bath sound tweet and let's snap it right back in to the housing. So again, you can't really goof this part up. It just, it just, uh, listen, it just snaps right in. It just snaps right in, as you can see. Actually, it really does just snap right in. Just take that, run it through like so. Look at that. Now, as far as the glue goes, you don't, I just do it because it's just how I was raised. Again, just take your glue and just put a little, a little blob there, maybe a little blob there, maybe a little blob there. You can put as much as you want. Just, okay, so there we go. So here's the key, though. You want once you do this, before you go wrenching the panel around and putting the um, putting the door back on, let this sit. So in other words, what I suggest doing is pull off both rear doors and have them on your workspace. So pull off both rear doors, bring them to your workspace, do the tweeters, and then go and do all the, do the mid ranges. So let that process, do the sound deadening, the mid ranges, etc. Let this cure for about half an hour, then put the door back on. So it's, it's all easy. All right, so now, again, just like in the front, we got to use our, our cap harness on the tweets. So we plug it in, and take it like so. And then we just take this, put it back down in there, just like that OE one was. Like so. And then we can put this guy back down there. Just like that. And then this is going to hang out over here. And then this will plug back into the tweeter. So no worries there. Um, so now, with that done, we just put the door back on like we did with the, I'm going to let this sit up and cure, but I mean, this is installed exactly the same way as the front door. There's nothing, there's no sense in, in watching all that over again and taking that time. So that's how we do the tweeter in the rear door. And uh, just make sure that everything is out of the way of this bolt hole here. So in other words, don't run your tweeter wires over here because this is where that, the handle from the door panel goes through. So just keep that clear. And then uh, that's it. I mean, it's that straightforward. New drivers installed, panel goes back in. So keep in mind, there are three plugs, speaker, ambient lighting, and whatever the heck this was. So we just don't want to forget to plug that in. So I want you to watch how I do this top ledge, and then we're going to talk about this bottom lip, and then we're going to reinstall it. But it's all about feel here. So it sounds kind of, uh, you know, holistic or whatever, but, you know, this is kind of an experience. So uh, let's get started. You're going to see my back for a little bit while I plug in things. So first I'm going to plug in the mid. I'm going to plug in the mysterious box, which I suppose I could take the time to learn what it is, but you know. And then we plug in the ambient lighting, lastly, down here.
and it only plugs in one way. You can't goof it up. So sort the seat belt out of the way. And again, if you recall, we pulled down to get it out. So now we need to go up and in. So this is a very specific way, but you'll see there's, you've kind of got to finagle the tabs a little bit. Like so. so you want to get them all the way up. And then remember, you feel back here and you'll get the tab. It'll line up just kind of organically. See, same thing over here. And then you just, so now let me see if you guys can come around. Let's see if I can move here. So we need to tuck this back down into there. So there's plenty of flex with these panels. These, it's just plastic and there's nothing. So you just effectively tuck this back down into there and you'll see when I'm finished actually. Well, I'll show you when I'm finished. So at this point, now that we've got it sorted up in there, we are just lining up pins. So and we can do all of this with our fingers. And then over on this side, if you guys can see what I'm doing, we're just folding back the, the trim, snap, snap, panels in, that's straightforward, super easy. And then to reinstall this guy, again, fold the seat down, or rather pull the seat butt out, and you just align, align the little tab, the little male tab into the female slot, we get the seat out of the way, and then we just tuck this guy in, snap it right back in place. Now the bottom of the seat goes back in, now this is a little trick, 20 years I have been doing this, 20 years at this point, I used to labor, labor, labor over this process, especially with convertibles, and it got more and more complex as these cars got more and more complex. It's rather tricky to pull these guys up through here. So, to eliminate that trickiness, take the belt, go down through, plug the belt in down here. I can't believe, not that I've labored over this for 20 years, but you'd think at some point with that kind of experience, you would have uh, to do this. And we're just plugging in the seat belt. Like so. Tuck the seat back down, like so. Get it situated, as it were. Actually, just go ahead and push it in. And at this point, you can just kind of work the seat belt right back through. Be done with it. And bam, you installed your rear sound stage in about half an hour. Four new speakers if you have the HK2 without. So very straightforward. We're rocking, we're rolling. So at this point, we've completed the stage one in the Cabrio. So we're gonna head up front. We have a separate video going over tuning settings, recommendations, etc. So it's quite simple. We've got the car on. We're gonna go into our settings. We're gonna talk a little bit about the bass, the treble, etc. So we hop into our tone. And again, this is the hi-fi tuning. This is uh, relevant to both sedan and coupes, three and four series. So boy, look at that, he had his factory treble wide open. Um, I actually kind of like it around plus one. Bass flat, always flat. Um, it's absolutely key to keeping this car balanced. Fader, back in the middle now that we've got, I was audited to the rear. Back in the middle, we want a nice balance in the car. Um, and that's it, that's where we're gonna set our settings. Now, what we can do, if you're a little bit older, um, in your 40s, 50s, 60s, you can have a little bit more fun with this only because a lot of, you know, we're losing that top end of our hearing. So, but it does still increase the distortion over above 2,500 Hertz. So kind of be aware of that. Um, so, you know, somewhere around there, two, three, four for you guys in your seventies. <laughs> uh, or if you've been to a lot of rock concerts, uh, but bass always flat, always, always flat in these cars. It's absolutely critical. Uh, you're not going to create any more bass in the car by turning that up. Uh, it's just going to increase the distortion. So that's all we're doing with our settings. And from here, we just rock out. I'm starving, I'm hot, 
And we are wrapping up for the evening. Thank you guys, as always, for joining us. We will see you again. Maybe come visit us at the new R&D Skunk Works here in San Diego. Kind of see a little bit about how Babson rocks and rolls. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy your evenings. Be well.